So I've upgraded my production value with a light pointed at the wall. I think it looks very professional. Okay, so today I'm gonna to show you how to use the Pitch 12 device to make like morph and filter shapes and stuff like that. So I've made a pad sound. This is the pad sound. Okay, so all this is is if you see in the MIDI here, I'm using I'm using MIDI. I'm using the lower register here to trigger um, different EQ curves and the higher register is playing the chords. So if I turn on this effects layer that I've got over here, you can see what is happening. So here it is. Basically, each time that I trigger a note down here in these lower octaves, it's changing the EQ shape. And you can do tricks like you can trigger it between normal and not normal or affect it um, by like stuttering the notes down here. And you can do that as fast as you want. So it's kind of an interesting, different kind of way of doing this kind of modulation that isn't the step mod. So you can also see that I'm on some of these notes, I'm actually turning these other modulators on. So I've got this uh, Parsec 8, and I'm increasing the mix of that on some of these. I'm sure it's here somewhere. So yeah, you can see on this one, the Parsec modulation amount is going up. I'm doing the same here on the LFO, and I'm doing the same on some of the steps here with the envelope. So I'm using that on a pad sound, but this is pretty useful for like bass sound design and stuff like that as well. So you can create like really weird filter shapes and then you can use different notes to go between the different filter shapes and get different kind of sounds of modulation. Um, I will probably do a fairly in-depth video about sound design using this method with basses and stuff like that, but I don't really have time for now to, to go into creating a bunch of presets for that, but I will do it eventually. But if you are looking to do something like that, you can find lots of these tables online that will show you how to create different vowel sounds and stuff like that um, by boosting and cutting certain frequencies in the EQ. And you could then morph between those. You can also create like really advanced low pass filters with lots of weird peaks in them and stuff like that and use the shift parameter to move them up and down and then switch between them with key switching. Um, the other thing that you can do with this is you can also turn on and off different effects or even affect different effect values over time. So say if on this note here, uh, let's say this note here, I wanted to, I could have a chorus or a bit crusher or whatever on it, but say for, I just wanted to affect this delay that I already have, I could turn up the detune, I could change the time change the time over here and then I could do a different value on a different note so yeah now you'll hear that the delay is basically just gonna go completely mental on every time I change a note so here it is so the way that I'm achieving this key switching um, without and, and being able to do it all in the one MIDI clip as opposed to having to route MIDI from somewhere else to control the effect, um, which you can do as well, is that in the node effects here on my polygrid pad, this is the patch that is playing just the bass pad itself. So on the node effects, I've got a key filter set up so that I'm filtering out everything that happens below B minus two, so that means from C1 to C8 or whatever, is notes that are going into po to polygrid to create the pad sound. And then right before my effects layer here, if I turn this on, right before the effects layer here, I've got, I've got a key filter that is filtering out all of the keys 
that are above B minus two. So you can set those however you want, like, and you could even have different ranges. So if you wanted to have one set of effects be controlled from C minus two to B minus two, and then have another set of effects being controlled from C minus one to C zero, um, you can do that. So you can have as many of these layers set up as you want, and they can all be in one MIDI channel. So say you wanted a different effect for each chord, you just take the bass note of the chord and copy paste it an octave down. And you could use that to have a different filter setup or a different EQ setup on each chord. So yeah, I just wanted to quickly show you some of the things that you can do with that pitch 12 modulator. I don't see an awful lot of people using it that much. So it's really good for, for key switching different effects, like in say stutter edit or something like that. I will eventually make a more in-depth video about, I suppose, more advanced sound design using the pitch 12 and how you can get it to get similar effects to something like stutter edit or something like that. Okay, so one thing that I forgot to mention when I was doing the main part of the video is if you stack all of these notes up on top of each other, or if you stack some of them on top of each other, whatever you want to do, you can get pretty cool results if you use the arpeggiator, especially if you play around the gate length. But yeah, for now, that's just uh, something quick and cool that you can do with it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more Bitwig videos, which I do fairly often. Light off.